how must teaching change to accommodate the reality of student access to LLMs? I can tell you, we received 4,000 emails from teachers all around the world. Each single country in the world sent an email. They are in distress. They don't know what to do. So, and that's, first of all, my love goes to them. It's this, this makes the cut, please, please, please. So all, I'm trying to respond to all of those. But the challenge is that they do not know, right? There's not really enough of guidance. And 10-hour workshop sponsored by a company that pushes this partnership on your school does not make a cut, right? There is a lot of comments how it's actually not supervised, not tested. And ultimately, right, do you really need to go with these closed models, right? You have so much open source, whole world, all the software runs on open source. Now, these LMs would not exist, nothing would exist without open source. So why don't you run an open source model, meaning like it's offline, on your computer and, spoiler alert, you don't need a fancy GPU from uh, Jensen, right? You can get an off-the-shelf computer and then run a model local with your students, train it over the weekend, come back on Monday, check with students what happened, learn all the cool pros, cons, laugh at hallucinations, figure out tons of cool things about it. Like, why do we need to push this partnership that we don't even know? Like, Alpha School, right? I don't know if you heard about that one. Apparently, AI first ran school, right? Where teachers are now guides that the forms that they are using. I just saw literally one hour before our call that uh, several VCs posted about this alpha school. So cash is flowing there heavily, right? VCs, but, venture capitalists. Yeah, venture, yeah. sorry. Yeah, venture capitalists heavily pushing alpha school. But again, in first comments from the general public, do we have a proof that that's better? What are the advantages? Because there's not, not going to be a perfect, wide, pure cut. There will be advantages as with any technology. So, and, and you're right, there are advantages, disadvantages, but I think if I might, if I may, and this is just an, an opinion, we might have to change the objective of school itself. And right now, school is about uh, really not learning. It's about results, testing. I got an A, I got a B. And maybe if we change school to, what exactly did you learn? Demonstrate for me what you learned. Then the grading system... Well, it's an uh, oral test. That's an oral yeah, exam. Oral, yeah, mm. but at, the grading system kind of has to become less important because now what a teacher's job is it's to figure out how much you know. And then what ends up happening is the more you know, the more excited you are to learn. And, you know, we may end up revolutionizing the whole thing because what you have is a bunch of kids in a room that are excited to learn. And, and, so there's the silver lining of all this because it exposes the fact that school systems value grades more than students value learning. And so students will do anything they can to get a high grade. This is not the first time people have cheated on exams, right? So if right now the only way to test people is to bring them into the office and, and quiz them flat-footed, then that's a whole other way of what they're going to have to learn. They're going to want to learn. And then they're going to, like we said, Chuck, if the, once they learn, you, you, there's a certain empowerment and enlightenment. I see it in people as an educator when that spark lights, when they say, wow, I never knew that. Tell me more, right? They didn't say, oh my gosh, I'm learning something. Let me take a break. So it can be a transformative to the future of education. But Neil, people are going to say the LLM will do all of that. And you know what? We have an expert in BCIs. That probably is something going forward that you'll have a brain computer interface and then someone's going to look at this, and I think there are people already saying, why do we need universities? Why do we need further education institutes? Is, exactly. Is, is... That's what I've been saying <laughs> for many years now. <laughs> why do we need an institution? Well, I, I don't want to put words in the ties, Mark, but <laughs> no. she said this. LLMs use pre-existing, already known, already determined information to give you anything that then cannot possibly be new. Whereas we can do new things that LLM has never seen before. Am I oversimplifying your point, Natalia? 
no, that's totally, uh, you know, correct. Because, hey, we are with this struggle, right? For obviously, I'm biased because this is actually my job, like as a researcher, right? We are sitting, you know, figuring out those answers to those problems, you know, and trying to figure out what would be the best way to measure, to come up with this. So, of course, you know, and there's so, so much more to that that we are coming up, humans, right? We designed LLMs ultimately, right? So we came up with these tools. It doesn't mean that the tool is fully to be discarded, but effectively, of course, right? Why you need an institution, for example, I was literally explaining to one of my students three days ago how to use a 3D printer, right? Well, LLM is not that yet to explain, right? Or can I give instructions? Sure, with the images and with the video, right? But if you're like, hey, this is an old fella, he has a 3D printer. Let me tell you how to actually <laughs> figure it out, right? This level of, again, of expertise, of knowledge, right? That's what you are striving, but also it has this human contact, right? That we are now potentially depriving people from because that's how you have this serendipitous knowledge, right? And connections like, hey, I just chatted and I'm like, oh, I never thought to do this because I'm in BCIs and that person is in astrophysics. And like, oh, we never, oh, well, I actually can use it. Like, that's totally not brain, but I can totally go apply and try it, right? And that's the beauty of it, right? And yeah, but, but to, I think to, to Gary's point, or which one of you said that, Gary or Chuck, if, if you, okay, you're non-invasive in your brain cognitive interface. Mm -hmm. If you get invasive, and yeah. that might be what Neuralink is about, if you get invasive, then I can get information gleaned from the internet and put it in your head. So you don't have to open 100 books to know it. It's already accessible to you. That and is the matrix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It got installed. Me, I know Kung Fu or whatever that line was. <laughs> I guess that's one point. But again, that's back to the point. Now I know Kung Fu didn't mean that you learned it, right? It got uploaded into his brain. It doesn't mean that he actually learned it, right? Who cares? And if it's in your brain and you have access to it, I don't care if I learned it struggling the way grandpa did. This is the future, right? That's, that's the thing, right? Because in the movie, which is excellent, right? I watched it 19 times or more. That's actually how I started my career. And besides this, I don't want to do anything else. I want to do this specific scenario, right? And we are still, you know, there. But that's the beauty. We do not know actually that just uploading would be enough, right? We have this like more tiny, I would say, studies right now of like vocabulary and words and things like that, where we're trying to improve people's language learning, right? It's like a very, very good example to show. And so there are tiny examples, but we do not know yet that even if, imagine, imagine we have this magical interface, right? That will upload invasively, non-invasively, doesn't, doesn't matter. We have it, right? It's, it's ready to go, perfect function, safe, whatever. You have it and then you upload all of it, that it actually will work. You, do, did you upload the knowledge, like all of that blah, blah, blah from ChatGPT 75? Yeah, sure. But do you actually use it? Can you actually use right. it? Is it really firing, which I'm simply talking so, about? So what you're talking yeah. about is a working knowledge of yeah. something. Not just knowledge not of it. Not just knowledge mm -hmm. of yeah. it. Yeah, okay. So are we, I mean, I think, Neil, what you were talking about just now about we've got to look at, and I think, Chuck, you would make the same point. We're focused on grades. And then it's the learning and are we going to have to, if higher education is going to exist as, as an institute and bricks and mortar, look at the way they evaluate. Because I can't see LLMs and BCIs not coming through stronger and stronger and stronger. So therefore, they're going to have to readjust how they look at a young person's ability to cats learn. out of the bag yeah i agree with you but i mean you know we are going to be herding you. cats i agree with you which is a load of fun um <laughs> so how do, it's how you evaluate how higher edu education then looks at its students and guesses or sort of ascertains their level of education and knowledge yeah, back to the grades, right? It's an excellent point. And it, there is no doubt, no one has any doubt, I think, on the fact that education does need to change and it has been long, long overdue, right? Mm. The numbers about, you know, the literacy, reading literacy, math literacy, they are decreasing in all the countries, I believe. I don't see, I have, I saw like ups there anywhere. It's down, down, down all these reports recently from multiple countries. But it's back to the point I made earlier about the grades or so about scoring, right? Who are we scoring and what are we scoring? Are we scoring a pure human, so just human, like human brain, 
as is, like Natalia, or I was calling Natalia with an LLM, right? So I'm using it so we know that. Or I was calling just an LLM, and then there is Natalia who used it, right? So this will be, even that was important. But ultimately, the school, of course, is not about that. As I mentioned, everything you learn is obsolete knowledge by itself, but it has this base. You do need to have the base. You're not going to be a physicist if you don't have it. Whatever it spills about, you know, you're not going to be math. You're not going to be a programmer. Our next paper is actually about wipe coding. Spoiler alert, not going to work if you don't have the base, right? And But the idea is that back to the what we actually maybe should look at really is what the school is great, which is the best thing I actually brought from school is, oh, this base, definitely super useful, but also my friends, people on whom I rely in hard situations, with whom we write those grants, with whom I, we can shout and have fun and cry over funding that is over for a lot of us, right? All of that stuff, right? These connections, right? This is what maybe we should value because we are killing it further and further, right? And we are just keeping people in this silos of being a user, Right, and that's where it only stays. And this imaginary three and a half friends from Zach, from Zuckerberg, right, that he mentioned, to thanks to whom we have three and a half friends, thanks to him and his social media, right. So I think that's why we need to really look into what we want truly from society, from schools, and maybe on a larger scale, what are the guardrails, right, and how we can actually enhance it, right, in in the way that are safe for us to move forward and evolve further, which because of course this will happen. Are, are you wise enough, are you and your brethren in this business on both sides of that fence, are you wise enough to even know where the guardrails should go? Might the guardrails be too protective, uh, preventing a discovery that could be, bring great joy and advance to our understanding of ourselves, of medicine, of our longevity, of our happiness? Is there an ethics committee? What, 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 in practice, how does this manifest? Yeah, I'm going to give you like two examples here real quick. So first about, obviously, AIs and LLMs, right? They were not born overnight, but we see how you know, a lot of governments really struggle still and very reactively react to those instead of being proactive, right? And the challenge here is that we do not have data to actually not to say that it is good stuff, that we should really implement it everywhere in, in our backyard. We don't have this data. What, why we are FOMO? And there is nothing yet to FOMO about to ri really run with it. But we can absolutely create the spaces where this is being actively used, for example, for adults, for discovery, to understand it. Why do we need to push it everywhere is still very unclear. We just don't have this data. But then back to the point of guardrails, right? What we should be doing, obviously, you know, shameless self-plug on the BCI work that I'm doing. There are multiple ASICs pushes right now for the BCI technology. We can agree it's still pretty novel, but it definitely moves forward very fast. So I'm having a hope that for this technology, for the big next thing, right? We agree LMs are great, but it's not the next big thing. It's robotics. And then we will see BCI. So for this big next thing, I'm very hopeful that we will be in time to protect our thoughts literally because... Think about what will happen, right? Before the study mode, right, you have censorship mode. And you know how the, like, look at DeepSeek, right? I'm not going to go far. So think about a billionaire. I'm not going to even name his name. Billionaire who has a social media platform, satellite platform, and neural implant, you know, startup and AI company. So he decided two months ago to cleanse history, right, from errors and mistakes. And tomorrow he will decide to cleanse our thoughts, right? This is the idea for $99.99, right? For Damn that Bill Gates. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> thing, no, right? we know. We know. And that's where we need to be really, really cautious. Like we should definitely look into that use case and not make that happen, right? And allow people for enough agency because that's the thing, right? People think, oh, that's great. But there is not a lot of agency. So this freedom of making a choice, that's already made for you in a lot of cases. And so that's something that we should definitely protect as much as we can. Like, do not force on those kids stuff because they cannot consent and say, no, it's because the school forced it on them and their parents decided that that's a big thing in, in San Francisco, in the Bay Area that you should use, right? So don't do that. So is one of, is one of the components to building a robust 
set of guardrails, a larger scale study of the one that you've already conducted that has different or, or more nuanced layers that focuses on other aspects, not just the cognitive load and skills. So a thousand people and not just 18 or whatever was I your... Mean, well, it was 54. Uh, yeah. you know, 54. But it's, it's not just that, right? We needed to do in larger scales for all of the, you know, spaces, like workspace. We didn't talk yeah. about this because obviously we it's heavily about education, but like workspace, we have multiple papers, right? Talking that people are not doing that well in the workspace. Like, for example, programmers estimate that they gain 20% of their time. They actually lose 19% of their time on the tasks. So there is so, so much more to it. We need to do this on larger scale with all the ages, including older adults. And then, of course, on different, different, different use cases and different cultural backgrounds. Right? This is in U.S. And, of course, cultural, it's very, very different. Like, I talked to so many teachers already, right, in Brazil, all over the world. It, you have this intricacy you need to account for. It's so, so, so important because otherwise it's going to be all washed Western style, which we already saw happening. And it is happening. And a lot of people are actually very worried their language will literally disappear in like five to 10 years. And it's not mm. like LLM magically will save it because it will not. Thank you.